package from China. Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's just awesome that you're tuning in. So in today's video, we are going to talk about the Pandora Portable from Datafrog. So in this video, I just wanted to check out what we're going to get and is this thing worth your money? So what you're going to get is just this USB cable and of course the box I've shown you before. This is for not data transfer, but it's only for charging the system itself. There is no USB power supply, nothing, not even an HDMI cable. So we're going to talk about it, what are we going to get and let's have some Pandora fun. When I unboxed the device, to my surprise, I did see that this device comes with the same D-pad like the Retroid. At first I was thinking we are going to get basically the same version, the really first edition that I've reviewed. But it seems to be that with the Datafrog you're also going to get this version with a special D-pad. The display itself is in 640x480 resolution. That's a 3.5 inch display IPS. You can see it looks beautiful. But I don't know if this is the 49 or the 60 Hz edition because there are some minor differences between the old and the new models. In the left top we're finding the analog stick is similar like the Nintendo Switch joystick and I really like it in my opinion. I did try some finding games and it plays very well. When you're looking at the D-pad itself, the D-pad is still the clickish D-pad. But this, I can already tell you, it plays very well. But right, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration so you can see how responsive the analog stick is and also the D-pad. The D-pad is something you really need to get used to because it's a click D-pad. But with the upgraded version that we're having now in different form factor, it plays just amazing. As you can see, all my moves come out instantly without any problem. Sadly, only having six buttons at the front and there are no shoulder buttons. So this will limit us to playing some games like PlayStation 1. Having this very nice clickish button, and I can tell you, it gives us a very nice and fast response. And at the right bottom corner, we're finding the home, select, start, and the speaker. And at the right, we're finding the volume control. And as you can see, you need to press it, or you can just hold it for scrolling up and down very fast. Here at the left top, we're finding the on and off switch. When you're pressing it very quickly, you can see you can put the system in standby mode for saving some power. And when you're holding it, it will ask you if you want to shut it down. And at the top we're finding the mini HDMI out. Keep in mind that you need to use an adapter or a cable, so otherwise you can't use it with a regular HDMI cable. We're having a jack out for the headphone, a CF card input, and of course the mic USB for charging. But in general, if you look at the form factor itself, it is very comfortable to play for a very long time. It doesn't even matter if you want to play like this with analog stick or with the D-pad. I think it's a very comfortable handheld. The 3 0 inch is not the biggest display we have seen in a handheld itself. But in general, it's beautiful IPS and a very nice resolution. The build quality, yeah, what can I say about it? It's just a plastic case. The weight comes from the battery that's inside. It is a 4000 milliamp battery. The device itself is running on a quad-core Gore-Tex A7 that is clocked on 1.3 GHz and has a 512 MB internal RAM memory. But if you look at the menu itself, it is very convenient and it's just similar like the Pandora Game 3D full-size Pandora's box. What you can see, we're having the list over here. This is the all list. This is just the shit pile of all the games. But we're having categorized. Here you can search through let's say the different games you're having. We're having a support for N64, Super Famicom, Famicom, PC Engine, the list goes on, Sega Dreamcast, even PSP. But I keep in mind that with this device itself, it's not super powerful, so it will have its limitations. More than 10 different platforms are supported within recent lists, so you can see what kind of games you have played before. And here we're having the search function, so if you just want to search through the list, super convenient. When you're holding the home button, you're going to get the menu, like with the Pandora box itself. Here we have some handheld settings, C key settings, and if you want to want to see for yourself, for example, you want to change out the language, and we can enter the game market. And with the game market, it seems to be you can download some games. 
I did notice a lot of problems before I did see some fellow YouTubers downloading games and it ended up not working. But it's something you can try out for yourself. On the handheld setting we're having Wi-Fi, Bluetooth mode and yes the Bluetooth you can connect an extra controller to this. The brightness can be adjusted over here. I think it's very bright and even on 60%. Keep in mind when you're pushing it to 100% it will consume more battery life. Like all the previous models, we also have a quick load, quick save option. When pressing the menu button in game, you're going to get this menu where you can make to choose for save load and going back to the main menu. But the weird thing is, it doesn't apply for every emulator. So it's a little bit, a bit messed up. But what I really hate about it is that you can see that it cuts off the display, so it's a little bit squeezed. No full display. Just want to show you another PSP game and the reason why is very simple. The first game runs very well, but with this game you can see it runs pretty poor. PlayStation 1 is a system that will run fine on the Pandora games. I will give you a quick example with Bloody Roar 2 that is a very high demanding game. Dreamcast is a system you don't see very often on handhelds, but I can already tell you it is really flawed on this device. And you need to choose the date every single time when you boot up a game. The previous game was a little bit of a choppy gameplay and now you can see with the two dimensional fighting game that it runs very well. It's still not perfect in many ways but this is the best what you're going to get with this handheld. But when you want to play some old school games, two dimensional like 8 bit, 16 bit, this will not be any problem on this handheld.
So what do I think of this very cool device or the Datafrog portable Pandora? I can already tell you, I am very positive about it. The display itself looks amazing. I really love this IPS display that comes with the handheld. But the only downside I do notice, and I think maybe the dual the resolution in combination with the emulator, sometimes when you're seeing a game, it has a black bar on top or the bottom or both. So it will not fill the full screen. I really like a button layout. Normally I always complain that you need to put the D-pad over here, but with this system, I don't have an issue with it. The D-pad, you really need to get used to this. It is a very clicky D-pad, but when playing some time with it, I really enjoy it and the new D-pad compared with the older model is a big improvement. The clickish button, same story, but when you're getting used to the system itself and the clickish button, you will notice it has a direct input. The analog stick plays fine, no complaints over here. I must say the audio, the audio is okay, but in general, I'm very positive about this product. The build quality is pretty decent. It weighs quite heavy thanks to the 4000 milliamp battery that is inside and gives most of the weight. Performance is pretty good, up to PlayStation 1, when you're having Sega Dreamcast or PSP, it will have some issues and also the same for N64, but it is always a little bit of problematic emulating this on a retro system like this. This is what you're going to get for your money. If you want to have more information, I will leave a link in the description. I here we have some end screens with some more information about the handhelds. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell and I will see you in the next video.